Today we'll be going over games that feature tactics along the long diagonal. That is uh, the H8 to A1 diagonal, okay? So does everybody here heard of the phrase fianchetto? It's Italian for on the flank or on the side, okay? So it's basically when you put your bishop on the long diagonal, there's a lot of good tactics that can arise. And so this is a game played from uh, over the weekend at the Mid-America Open. White is uh, Eric Tenchenko. Black is Michael Kummer. Me. So I'll be the hero. All right? <laughs> All right. So black counters with C5. This is called the Sicilian defense. It's basically he's controlling D5 and F5. I'm controlling this important D4 square. If he puts anything on D4, I'll take it. All right? Knight to F3, knight to C6, solidifying D4. But white plays D4 anyway, which is okay. So black trades his side pawn for a center pawn, so everything's looking pretty good. So this is a really standard opening, a really standard position you'll see in the Sicilian opening. All right, so black plays G6, wanting to get his bishop on the long diagonal. White plays a very fishy move here. Plays B3. This is not the main line. So he wants to, to challenge my bishop, my fianchettoed bishop, with his own fianchettoed bishop, okay? But it's weak. It's a weak move. So now this knight, as we see, is in a pin. So when pieces are in pins, we usually want to attack them, okay? But if we attack them with e5, as we saw from last week, that would be weak because it would give ourselves a hole on d6. We don't want to do that because he could plop right in on b5 and then take the hole. And plus, now if he played e5, if we played e5, the knight's no longer in a pin because it blocked up the bishop. All right, another way we could attack it is queen to b6. But white could just protect it with c3, okay? And obviously we don't want to take this knight because there's two players on it, but he has two defenders. So the math doesn't, doesn't add up because knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. And then it's got his queen in the center real nice, okay? So we don't want to attack the pin piece, but... We don't want to just let this uh, prime position go free. So what move would you be considering for a black here? Queen to a5 check. All right, I like it. And that's what I play in the game. Okay? So now he's in check. All right, so if he blacks, let's say, with the queen, see, this is one of his key defenders. So we would take... Knight takes, and now he's only got one defender on the knight, and we have two attackers, so he would lose a piece. All right, so let's, let's hear some other ways he can, um, he can get out of this check and not lose his knight. C3. I knew somebody was going to say C3, okay. And, and hey, it looks, it looks good. It does look good. I'll give you that. Just not good enough. So C3. So it looks, it looks like everything's going good. I blocked the check. I got another defender on my knight. Life is good. But is it? No. What can you tell me about this C-pawn? It's pinned. So it's not doing what it normally should do. Right? So how many people in reality are protecting this knight? One. Just the queen. All right. But we have to be really careful here. It's like, okay. The knight's free, let's just take it. Oh, you have to actually calculate out how you should take it, because you have two different ways to take it. But, how should we take it? All right, so, everybody yelled out bishop. All right, so bishop takes. Because if we take with the knight, it's still okay. We're, we're going to get up a pawn. But how is white going to going to get at least a piece back here. 
pawn to b4. Okay? Then we'd have to retreat our queen. He take, we take, take, and now we'd be up a pawn, okay? But so we played check. He played c3, a dubious move to uh to get out of the check. But when we take with the bishop, all right, and now he tries b4. What's a really cool move that we have? So we actually uh, keep the piece. Because if we move the queen, he'll take the bishop, right? Yes, we take this pawn here. And if he takes this way, we'll take queen check. And now we have two players attacking the bishop. So if he, uh, if he plays like queen here, remember, we just take. And then bishop takes bishop along the long diagonal. And if he takes our bishop here, Now what move do we have? It's kind of tough to see. Mm -hmm. Knight to c2, double check. The queen cannot take this knight because this queen is also delivering a check. All right? And he can't play bishop to c3 for the same reason. So he has to play king to e2. We take the rook, he takes back, and then all we have to watch out for is him pushing this, right? So we can just get rid of all that with knight to f6. Make sense? And then he doesn't have any tactics along this long diagonal. All right, so, so now everybody, we shouldn't want to play c3. We don't want to play queen to d2, so what's the only move white can do to get out of this predicament? King to e2. Yeah. What a sad state of <laughs> yeah. Happened? Yeah. So oh. this is this is what happened in the game. He had to put. His, it's probably not how he uh, planned it out. This is this is a notebook that I've ever seen. <laughs> so you really don't want to. Yeah. You you really don't want to be uh, fiancatoing this bishop to counter this bishop unless. You're strongly prepared to do so, okay? So, so he's got this. So now his king is stuck in the center. Is our king stuck in the center? No. We can still castle. So that's what we want to do. Before we go on any kind of uh, big attack here, we want to make sure that we're castled and secure. So knowing that, we'll play knight to f6, attacking the pawn. If he pushes the pawn, we'll take it with the other knight. So he protects his pawn with f3. Now we castle the safety. We're castled by move uh, 8. Is this how you would be playing, Zeev? Just, all right, his king's in the center. Let's just get safe. No, no. But now you know. That's how you want to play. Get castled first. And now we don't have to worry about getting checked. All right? But Eric, his king's not in a good spot. He's got a lot of pieces on the back row, so what do you think he plays? G4. Attack. <laughs> Attack the king. But he's pretty safe. He's pretty safe. I don't know that little pawn's going to help him, but we'll see. So black plays D5, just what he was thinking about, okay? Break open the center now that our king is uh, safe. D5. So he takes, takes our guy, so take, capture back. Nothing difficult about that. So he takes d5. Now, we can get another tactic now that he, he's taken that knight off of uh, d4 with, with taking and so forth. OK, now we have tactics again on this long, long diagonal. So whenever we move this knight anywhere we go, the bishops are now attacking each other, right? So everything's looking good. But if we take, if we move here now, if that's even legal, it's not because he took our pawn. If we take, knight takes pawn, he'll just trade off. Bishop takes bishop, you know, and nothing gained, nothing lost, right? So when we move our knight, what do we want to say after we move our knight in our dream scenario? Checkmate. Che <laughs> yeah, checkmate would be, would be good. But we want to say check. Because when we move, 
this knight, if we can say check, then guess what? We get a free bishop, right? Obviously, that wouldn't be checked, though. All right, so we need to check the king. All right, so where does that king have to be? e3, f2. Sound good? But we can't just say, hey, Eric, move your king. <laughs> All right? Just doesn't work that way. All right, so how can we try to tell him, hey, move it? Put him in check. Put him in check. All right, bishop to a6. Check. I like, it. I like it too. And of course, he, he goes, okay. <laughs> All right. So he moved to a dream position. All right, let's see if Ken West can get the right move here. Could he have played C4 in that position? Yeah. But, but uh, that's where, that, that would have been fine. I would have been very happy if he would have played C4 because now we take with the pawn uh, and now uh, we're attacking the pin piece. Yeah. So, so, so king to f2. So he's not actually down any material until, well, but, but his king's there. Knight takes g4 check. We could play knight to e4 check, but that's no fun. You want to take, take something, and he's like, okay, oh, thanks. It's like, well, you're not going to be thanking me in a minute. All right, so bishop takes b2. All right, so, so now things look very dire for for white in this position. G5. G5. Well, he kind of wants to at least get this bishop for this guy, right? So this is important at home and for everybody else. If they play knight to c3 here, all right, we have an option. We can take the rook and then he takes, or we can just take the knight for free. You always want to take a free piece, okay? You don't want to give them anything back. So that's how you would take. If you had the option between winning a piece or uh, winning an exchange, always pick winning the piece. Okay? Can you take with the queen? Well, if we took with the queen, then it kind of uh, makes our bishop immobile. We'll take the bishop from e3. Take the. Yeah, double your rook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's another. Th well, yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, if we play queen takes knight here. We would take the bishop on a6, and then that would unleash another defender of a1. And then we'd be looking pretty good for, well, well, white would still be losing, but not, by, not, not as bad. Not as bad. Yeah, you should have just taken the free piece. All right. All right. So, so okay. So, but if he plays knight to d2 here, he's in a lot of trouble as well, because bishop takes... Queen takes, and then queen takes, knight check. So what is he going to do? So right no, no, no. He's only going to lose an exchange if he can figure this out. All right, look, so. So look, we want to really put our knight on d2, right? Like really bad. But we can't. Fantastic. So bishop takes a6. So he took something and I want to take it back. Now we can play knight to d2 and think, hey, you can't do nothing. All right. So now I cannot take the knight back. So he only managed to lose an exchange here. So he's still technically in the game. So, so I take the pawn. So, so now, of course, he still wants to checkmate me, right? That's what he wanted to do the whole game. So what do you think he does, he plays to try to get a checkmate attack going? You don't have to get this right. He plays h4. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, h4. When in doubt, go for, go for the throat. Go for h4. All right, so black could take the, uh, the coward's way out and play queen to f6 check. Heck yeah. But, but then I lose my past e pawn. My d pawn's kind of weak. And it's not very fun. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't want to checkmate too, right? So I play the move e5. Okay? So you're like, oh, man, you just dropped a pawn. But Oops. it's not going to be very cool. For, oh, you dropped another pawn. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> and then you might as well just call it a day for a white. Boom. Okay. All right. So, 
So e5 is a good move, all right? So he's like, I don't care, right? Whatever. So he plays h5. I'm going to checkmate you, right? So, so, he's, so he's got a couple different checkmate ideas with uh, the move h4, okay? Here you go, h5, h6, and see how that's protecting the, G, the g7 square, and he's going to checkmate me over there. Or he's just going to break open the h file and get his queen over there and checkmate me. So he's got, he's got a lot of good ideas to checkmate me, but they're a little slow. All right, e5, so h5. All right, so now I decide I'm going to protect that e-pawn. Rook a to e8. So queen to c3. Now ask yourself, why did he play that? Oh, yeah, he wants to get over here and checkmate me. All right, so lots of different checkmates here. So I'm like, OK, go over there. So he's like, OK, thanks. All right, I'm over there. All right, so e4, threatening, check the, the pawn fork, OK? He sees it, plays knight to c4. So I'm like, oh, I can't resist, free pawn, all right? <laughs> and so now he's thinking, life is good. Pawn takes g6, threatening, checkmate, all right? So, so who wants me to play e3 to try to get out of this checkmate? Yeah. Then he plays king to f3. Maybe take the pawn check. Right. Also, queen to c2 check does not work either, because uh, king here, queen there. It, it would just have to be a draw. All right. So, so. Wait, what? Oh! All right, take it all back. Now that I thought of something, if queen takes check, <laughs> king to there, I'll play queen to d1 check, and then I'll take the coward's way out check. But there's nothing wrong with that. And then I'm winning. All right. But after takes, where's my third and final check? Yes, pawn takes discovered. pawn, a discovered check. All right, and so now they call that the Christopher Columbus check. The Christopher Columbus check. There it is, discovery. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So White decides he's gonna come down and take my pawn and checkmate me, <laughs> but he can't because he's in check. Too bad. And look at what piece he touched. Oh, the queen. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He thought he was about to checkmate me, and unfortunately, he can't. So, so he's got to put his queen there, and then there. But he decides, hey, he'll just call it a day after he touched his queen. So if your opponent even tries to make an illegal move with the piece, doesn't matter. If they can legally move that piece, sorry, you have to. It's your responsibility to know if you're in check or not, OK? So, so that's so that's that. Okay. So always enforce that. All right. It, yeah. Yeah. So so he touches in the tournament chess. It's touch move. So if you touch a piece, you have to move it. So he touches his queen to checkmate me. Unfortunately, that's not legal. But he does have a legal move with this queen, right? So he touched the piece, even though he didn't intend to move to f3 with the queen. You have to. Sorry, buddy. And then you don't even take. You play queen check first and, and really hurt them. <laughs> so now we all know about tactics along the long diagonal. So in the next game, everybody should be able to solve this tactic, even though it's probably right at the 1400 level, OK? So I hope everybody can see it. This is my, uh, my last round game. But it was really easy because I just saw all those tactics along this diagonal, so it was fresh in my mind, OK? Black again? Uh, yep, I get black twice in a row. Yep, just like I called it. All right, so, so white plays d4, knight to f6, knight to f3, g6. That's where you want the bishop, on this long diagonal. It's 
It's like a gold mine out there. <laughs> e3, not the best move. You don't want to be blocking in your pieces when you don't have to. So bishop to g7. c4, all right. d6, knight to c3. And you're like, Mike, how in the world is there going to be a tactic on this diagonal? There's one, two, three, four, five pieces in the way. Well, really four to get the rook. But four pieces in the way. You just have to be patient, OK? That never happened. Castle. It happens sooner than you think. Bishop e2, another kind of passive move, all right? Don't need to be playing this passive as white. Knight b to d7. Castle. Uh, e5. You put another piece in this long diagonal. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So pawn takes. So now, <laughs> yeah, can't get another piece. So we want space. This bishop can't move, so we take back with the knight. OK? All right, so what does he do? I couldn't believe it when I saw it. <laughs> B3. I, I was so excited. Pawn to B3. All right, so take a, take a good, good look. B3. All right. So what's going on? He just, so now this bishop is attacking this rook through an x-ray. And now there used to be four or five things in the way. Now there's only three. So what can you tell me? If all the knights get out of there, our bishop has a clear shot at the rook. But the only way that would work is if it's our move, right? If all the knights get out of there and it's white the move, it's like, oh, boop. That was real tough. Shucks. All right. So we need to get rid of the knights. Knight to e4. Uh, and, Followed by knight to accept free. And, and he figured it out. Grandmaster Ken West. All right. So e4, pawn to e4. So knight takes, free knight, huh? Free knight. Uh, are you, now, wait, are you happy for black or happy for white right now? Who? Black, because he's got, you say it? Well, what's he got? Is he going to go here? Knight takes f3, check. So now, even though his rook's under attack, it doesn't matter. You got to deal with a check. So he takes, and bishop takes, and then it's a pretty easy victory from here. There's nothing, there's nothing else, um, well, in my mind, we'll see what the computer says, but there's nothing else in my mind he could do after knight e4. If he tries to protect it, it's going to be the same thing, right? Knight takes, check, bishop takes, knight takes, bishop. Bishop. Okay, nothing he can do. All right. So, so ninety four. Very good. All right. So if you see, that's the power of this uh, dark square bishop. All okay? right. Just be patient. And I mean, it only took until move eleven, and I got I got his rook. Sound good? All right, so the game, pretty easy from, from here on out, but you want to limit the counterplay, OK? Makes sense. C5, pawn takes C5. No, 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 first things first, first things first. Bishop to A3, another discovered attack, OK? All right, so bishop back to e5, attacks the, uh, the pawn there. Now c5, takes, bishop takes. When you're up, you just want to trade material. There's nothing easier than winning a one game. Everybody should repeat that at home. Because everybody thinks, oh, it's so tough to win a one game. It's really not. 
this is a one game, and it's not difficult. You should be basking that, hey, I'm up. I'm winning. What's a one game? Oh, one game? A one game is basically a position where you're winning. Okay, so say like in basketball, you're up by like 10 points, okay? It's pretty easy. Or if, if this goes by like soccer scoring. So I'm up by two, two goals in soccer, right? It should be pretty easy to win that game, right? All I have to do is play a little defense, uh, you know, just make sure that he doesn't get any good scoring chances, and I'll win because I, I got that two-point advantage. So, but a lot of people say, oh, man, it's so tough because what happens when you get a one game is you tend to relax. And your opponent, he's backed into a corner now. He's down by two goals. He's going to be taking out his goalie, trying everything he can to beat you, like, like Eric did last game, pushing all his pawns toward my king. right? So what you want to do is just try to trade off material, Try not to make anything so like confusing. R uh, limit the uh, complications of the position. Make it easy for you to win. And how do you do that? Is by trading the material. Okay. So so that's why we took his queen, and um, and so forth. And uh, so so now he's attacking our rook. So we move our rook. G3. So bishop f5. You want to trade? We'll trade. So when you're losing, you probably don't want to trade material because if you trade off everything, you're done. So knight to d2. So that's a. It's not the best move. So what do you think uh, black plays? He just. Rook. Yes. So we get our last guy into play and we put the put the guy in the pin, okay? So he's got to move his uh, knight away. So we take check, bishop takes, and now we'll just tell this bishop to go away, b6, all right? So he can't resist taking our guy. So rook takes, bishop, okay. So now he attacks our rook. Oh, so we could play that, but that would give him a free move. So to avoid complications, we just retreat all the way to the back row. So now our rook can't really get attacked. The worst move for white, as everybody will know, <laughs> in this position, or for black, is to play f6 here. All right, no reason to give him any kind of checks with the king, okay? So you don't want to play f6 in this position. There's no reason to. And plus it loses a pawn right off the bat. So don't even think about playing that, all right? So c5, all right, attacks. Bishop to e5. Still don't want to resist the urge. Resist the urge. Because remember, if you were following our classes the last couple of weeks, one, F6, no good ever. And second, if you're up material, right, in an end game, you should be able to win a free pawn. You don't have to trade this pawn for this pawn. You should be able, since you have a material advantage, you should be able to just win it outright, okay? So how would we go about winning some of his pawns now? What would be our idea? So, so you see he's got this undefended pawn and this undefended pawn. How would we go about trying to get them? Attack the bishop. So attack the bishop. I like it. <laughs> so, so yeah, how would you do that? With the rook, right? Get the rook on the active file, all right? And now we got free reign to do whatever we want here. So bishop to f3. So rook to d2. I think rook to d3 is probably fine too. But rook to d2. So if he plays a3, we have a fork. Bump, bump. But he plays e4. All right. So remember. Resist the urge to make things complicated. Just move it. 
Oh, Bishop H3, is there going to be any kind of checkmate foreseeable? Not with that white bishop there. <laughs> Even if that white bishop wasn't there? No. No, there no checkmate. So just bishop E6. Get them all in a line here. All right, so, so he goes for another uh, attack here. So rook takes a2, f5. Now, unfortunately, this is another mistake people make when they have a one game, all right? They move too fast. It's like, oh, I can do anything. It doesn't matter. I'm crushing him, okay? So if I was thinking, what move would I make in a heartbeat? Bishop takes b3, game over. Unfortunately, oh, my bishop's attack, I guess I'll move it. I move it backwards. It's a big mistake, all right? So when you have a one position, try not to move so fast. H4, rook d2. So now, instead of winning my pawn right up, I, my rook has to go on a mission to get it. Bishop, bishop attacks my rook, rook to d3, king f2, so rook takes b3, all right, so pawn takes g6 here, okay, so he's got to try something to try to beat me here, all right, all right, so how should we, how should we take back the h pawn, the h -pawn. good. Because we don't want to be susceptible to these checks. All right. So if you can keep your king safe, it makes your life a lot easier. Those three pawns look pretty good now. Yeah, I like them. <laughs> e5. Aren't you worried about the bishop pairing? <laughs> <laughs> no. So the only way I'm going to win is if I get a queen. So what move should I make? Should I move this pawn, this pawn, or this pawn? <laughs> move the one closest that's coming to get a queen, okay? Now you're saying, oh man, what happens if he plays here? We just check. <laughs> we just, no, we, we'll check and then keep pushing him. Okay? Because that's the only one we're worried about getting right now. All right, so he doesn't play that. Instead, he keeps on with his own threat, h5. I don't know, but it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. So we see that he has really no threat here. So we'll just take, take. All right. So, so what is White's dream scenario here? Checkmate. checkmate. Yeah, checkmate. So let's say I I start playing like an idiot. Okay. It, it's black move again. He gets a lot of moves. <laughs> so this would be his uh, ideal setup. Check, checkmate. Okay? So let's not let that happen. We can, we can just try to stop that all right now. Okay, so he wants to get there and there, and, and his bishop's on those nice diagonals, Troy McKing. So we can't really stop him from playing bishop here, bishop here, right? Does everybody agree? Okay, good. Ziv agrees, so that's one. All right. But we can stop him from playing here and here without repercussions. Anybody see a good defensive move here? Bishop at five. Why not? Why not? Just make it so he's got no hope. All right, you want to make moves that almost make the guy want to resign or at least die a little inside like that move would do. It's like, oh man, I was going to do all those cool things to you. Don't give him any kind of hope. No hope, all right? So now he plays the move, bishop here like he wanted to, and now we just check. And he doesn't even care where he puts his king. He's like, okay, king one, wherever. So just keep marching that pawn. H6, 
That doesn't look so scary now that we have a bishop here, right? So check him again. King to f2. Keep marching that pawn. And now he's got one last hurrah here. Check. All right? Yeah. So, yeah. so a lot of people are laughing, but it turns out he's going to be threatening checkmate in a minute here. All right, so, so take with the bishop, and now he plays e6. All right, so pawn takes e6, bishop takes, and now black can self-mate, if he will, at once. Where should this king not go? Like the last thing you want to do is accidentally put this king here. The corner. The corner. Game over. All right. So, so let's just not go there, and everything will be okay. So there's no checks now. Well, He's out of checks, right? Unless he just wants to give me a bishop. Yeah, exactly. Even though he got all those checks in at the end, well, three, he gave it up. He gave it up. And so that's the game. So, so now hopefully everybody knows. Go to the last check. Go to the last check. So everybody knows that's what you should be playing. That's what you should be doing. Always fianchetto your bishop on g7 and then just wait for the tactics to happen. Be, be patient, and they will happen. But once they happen, you have to strike instantly because they're not going to wait around forever, okay? Mm -hmm.